I felt confused about basic uh, biology, X, 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 Y, X, 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 Y. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I'm a female, then I should be XX. Why does it say XY? As a child, it's really scary to be in the hospital and not know why you're there. Other than there's something wrong with what's between your legs. I started in labor about 4 o'clock in the morning and went on to the hospital. When we arrived, the uh, gynecologist was just very excited about that it was a boy. And then he said, oh wait, you know, he changed his mind right in midstream. I was born in 1976 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They decided that their only option was to remove the unascended testes and remove the clitoris. Now they removed the male reproductive organs first and then sent me home. And then about a year later they removed the clitoris. Now I don't remember any of this at all. I was a kid who was born with ambiguous genitalia. So issues about sexual identity and uh, the science of sexology have been important in my life as long as I can recall. In my case, my first surgery was at age three months. My last surgery was at age 23. I've had 16 surgeries over the time of my life. Between age zero and age 12, I had at least one surgery per year. A child with intersex is a child who, on physical exam, has features that are not wholly male, or not wholly female as considered in the traditional sense. Physicians, presumably in the best interest of the child, would take upon themselves the burden of the information and make decisions as to gender, sex of rearing, gender of rearing, in a way completely independently of the parents. My father said it to me most clearly. He didn't think that he was being offered a choice. And I think that most parents have this experience. And they said that they could correct the problem. And uh, that was, you know, we could raise her as a girl. And, uh, and, and obviously we're taking their advice and I feel very confidently there was nothing malicious or anything of that order. They just thought that was the best way to handle it. When you're a little kid and everybody goes on summer vacation, you come back to school after vacation and you're all supposed to tell about what you did on vacation. So I always went to the hospital. All these other kids were like, you know, going to Yellowstone. So I learned very early to lie because I couldn't tell kids that I'd spent the summer in the hospital and it had my genitals, you know, chopped up again. It was a battle between the ages of 13 and 18. All the time my parents would ask me, did you take your pill today? Sometimes I'd lie and say yes, sometimes I did, you know? I'd take it on and off, but for the most part I took it and I grew really fast. And, you know, I just, just you know, I started developing these breasts, which are, they're okay, you know? But, um, and these hips, which I hate, and these like typical female fatty deposits, and, uh, hmm. I would go back to school and sometimes be maintaining this plastic tube coming out of my genitals for up to six weeks, draining a sack that I would have strapped to my leg underneath my, my jeans. I thought that they were trying to make me look more like a boy, and they were trying to make it so that I could stand to pee. Most kids who are hermaphroditic or born intersex like me uh, tend to have a urinary meatus or a urinary opening um, someplace other than at the tip of the penis, 
And in my instance, it was at the base of the penis or the base of what would have been a penis. The first couple months that I was a messenger, I was in so much pain that I could hardly sit down on the seat because the vaginoplasty is so fucking disgusting and so barbaric. It's starting to come out. Like the, the in, inner part of the intestine is starting to come out and like stick out. And I was told like right around 14 to 15 that I would probably have to wear a maxi pad for the rest of my life. I don't know if you've ever tried to like ride a bike with a maxi pad. It does not work. It doesn't work. It like gets all crumpled up or it moves or anything like that. And I am not about to stop every hour and like check on this maxi pad. I'm just not going to fucking do it. I'm not a girl, you know. Stop treating me like I am. Every soccer game, every, every uh, activity, we were always concerned that somebody would find out and approach her. And she told me later that a number of people called her names. And I cried over that. And I said, honey, I, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. I think it's horribly unfair that uh, one's sexual feeling, one's ability to be able to feel like they can couple in an intimate way with another human being is literally destroyed by some doctor's idea about how genitals are supposed to look. Like, I didn't even know that women had vaginas. I didn't even know that, uh, to put it bluntly, I didn't even know that women had, like, holes between their legs. I didn't know what that was at all, because I didn't have one at all uh, until I was 18. So I really didn't know anything about the female sexual anatomy until I was 15, 16, when I had my first girlfriend. One day at LSU, she went and uh, got all of her records and she understood exactly the problem with the x y chromosome and everything that happened to her. I couldn't wait to get home to read it, so I jumped in my car and I opened the folder and, and I couldn't even get past the first line. Like, I got, I read the first line and it was very medical and said karyotype um, colon uh, x y. And I'm like, oh. And then I just got, I just, I was just stunned. And I tell people, you know, that I, I felt confused about basic uh, biology, X, 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 Y, X, 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 Y. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I'm a female, then I should be X, X. Why does it say X, Y? We tried to explain to her this was uh, the best thing that we thought to do, and including the doctors, and we had agreed. Uh, so there's not much else you can say. She was not a... Not very happy at all during a, what, about a year or so there. She was getting She was adjusted. real angry. She was angry toward us and, and the, doctors. the doctors. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was happening to me. And I just was, I felt sick. And I, I just started to lose it. I struggled with trying to find a surefire method to be able to take my life. And, uh, thought long and hard about something that would be fast and painless and that I couldn't make a mistake with and um, you know uh, settled on trying to throw myself in front of a car. I woke up the next morning in the bathroom on the floor with my arm wrapped around the toilet and I was just like oh I feel like crap oh god you know and I was just I was just at this new all-time low. I couldn't even kill myself correctly. When I finally came to terms with my identity as an intersex person, not pretending to be a boy, not fearing being a girl, just being intersexed, passing as a boy, playing the joke of looking like a boy, became tremendously engaging and a lot of fun. I don't remember when I forgave them. Just one day it happened. Just one day I just I woke up and I just... I felt at peace with them. And uh, I realized that, that they love me very much. And uh, and it was okay. It was okay that they allowed this to happen to me. I don't know one intersex individual who is happy with the treatment they have received from the physicians that they have consulted with over the years. Not one, not one. 
I've spoken to people internationally, more than a thousand of them. I'm eager for the medical society to present these successful cases, because I can't find one. I hope that we can make amends to the individuals that we have harmed over the years, and I think our profession should do that in a formal way. I'm doing the best I can to educate enough people to see that this practice is stopped, that there will be no cosmetic surgery on the genitals of infants anymore, that it's okay to raise intersex kids as intersex people, and if they choose later to have a surgery, if they are given the chance to make the choice between the natural genitals they were born with and genitals that may look more like this or more like that. If they had the chance to do that, if I'd had the chance to do that, I wouldn't have gone through quite so horrible an adolescence, quite so difficult an identity formation as an adult. These surgeries are going to stop, you know? And if they stop within the next 5, 10, 15 years, and they will, they will stop in my lifetime, They'll stop my lifetime, and I'll get to talk to little hermaphrodites running around. I'll get to hold them in my arms. I'll get to tell them, you know. <laughs> I'll get to tell their parents. how wonderful their children are.